Um, yeah, so uh, Stoke this weekend, uh, traditionally a, a, a tough fixture, but they're at the bottom of the table at the moment. Is it, um, is it a, a challenging fixture, do you think, or a potential banana skin, or do you go into the game with, with a lot of confidence on the back of the recent victories? Um, I think, well, first and foremost, like I, say, I think we've got a lot of confidence at the minute because we've obviously been five games unbeaten and, and I think we've been playing quite well. Um, from that point of view, going to Stoke, yeah, it's, it's never easy and I think people might look at the table and think that we need, we must win the game because obviously they are at the moment at bottom. But if you if you look at it from what squad they've got, what individuals they've got, they, sh they shouldn't be there, I don't think. They, they will turn it around, but obviously for us it's to make sure they don't turn it around this weekend and we want to go there and, and get a win. Absolutely. How have you spent your international break, Andy? Um, just we had a few days off. I just been at home with the family, relaxing, and now I'm I'm ready to go again. It's been nice having a few days off, but again, as as a footballer, you just want to play matches, and and I can't wait for Saturday now. Did you stay around Bristol, or did you go elsewhere? Um, yeah, I was around, and then I went back home. We've got a house back uh, by Birmingham, so I was there for a few days. But yeah, it's been been nice. Did you um, watch the Austria games at all? They had some good results, I think, didn't they? Two games unbeaten. Did yeah. They crash something six yeah, they beat uh, Latvia six nil. Yeah. I, I I didn't see that one, but I watched the second game against Poland, yeah. um, which was a good result as well away nil nil. So they in the in the hand to qualify. Yeah. Yeah. I I just wondered if you were still had international aspirations. Have you spoken to the coach at all at any point? Or um, I haven't. I haven't spoken with a new manager, but I've. I've been on standby for the last, the whole well, the whole of last season and now. So yeah, of course it's all. It'd be nice to get back into the national team, but I can only do that with playing well here. So hopefully that carry on and I'll get back into it. How do you assess how they're doing at the moment um, in um, in qualifying for Euro 2020? I think they lost. They lost the first two games and now they've have they played five games or six games. If well, they've not lost the. The last few, they've won three out of them, I think. So they're doing all right. They're one one point off second. So there's everything to play for. Yeah, absolutely. Do you watch other international games as well over the international period, or do you try and have a break away from football if you know what I mean? Yeah. Keep yourself fresh. Um, yeah. No, I've I've had, I've watched the uh, England game against Kosovo. I watched that one, and and I watched the uh, Ireland game when like. On the on the iPad when obviously Callum played and and a couple of my friends I know I played so I watched a couple of games yeah 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 the, that um, England game was pretty crazy wasn't it Kosovo finally end to end eight goals so uh... yeah first half was great second was a bit boring <laughs> didn't score again but no it was good yeah yeah fair one um, just moving on to Stoke um, I'm guessing well, oh, first of all actually how how are the guys looking that come back from international duty have you seen the likes of Adam Ham, Noah and um, Callum, are they in good nick for the weekend? Yeah, I think so. I think obviously they've all come back this morning. We've all seen them today and I think we changed obviously our day off so they've got two days two days to get ready for the match. Fair enough. Um, Stoke City, you've kind of just been talking about it there, but do you think it's a good time to play them or a bad time to play them? I think, yeah, like, I think it's... People might say it's a good time, it's a bad time, but I think it's it's gonna be hard playing them. It doesn't matter what stage of the season because I like I said I think they've got a really good good squad, really good players. So for us, it's about playing our game and, and just trying to go there with the confidence we've got and, and get the win. I'm guessing there's a chance that Ashley Williams might be involved, and he's obviously joined the squad not so long ago. What have you made of his arrival, and what's he added to the to the Crystal City? Yeah, obviously, everyone in the team know, knows off Ashley. Obviously, that he's he's been around for years, and I played against him quite a lot as well. So we know of his qualities, and I think he's had is he two or three under twenty threes games now. So he's, he's played games. So yeah, if if the manager was to select him, I'm sure Ashley would think he's he's ready to go. Yeah, I was going to say, have you played against him? You said you have. How, how did you do in those games? But. Come scored a couple of times. <laughs> I scored. I scored. I remember. No, but yeah, no. He's he's obviously been around at Swansea and Everton, and he's been at, played for Wales for I don't know how many times. And you can see the careers that he's obviously been a, a brilliant player. So we're hoping that he he can come in if, like you say, if he's gonna be involved, um, and and help us out and help the younger boys out and with his experience. Yeah, I was gonna say, is it is it. A, a case of, um, I suppose, his experience in balancing out a little bit of the younger players 
in a squad, I suppose that's that's a really good asset to have. Yeah, of course. I think with his experience, he, he might not even be on the pitch. I think off the pitch, even he can help the younger centre halves, the younger players with his well, what he's seen in football, and I'm sure it can only help us. Do you ever get asked to help out the younger guys, or do any of the younger guys come to you for advice at all? I think it's. I'm trying to do it a little bit more. I think with because I well, I try to see myself. I've been around for a little bit as well now and. Yeah, I try and help the younger guys. Obviously, like there's Antoine coming through at the minute, so we try and help him, like how he can maybe we think we can improve his finishing and stuff like that. So I think it's important. But then I think, I, like for example, I can only talk about Antoine because he's he's been the one I've been trying to help. But he's he's took it on board and he's he's trying to work. And you can see how how hungry he is to to learn. So that's that's brilliant. Yeah, he's done really well when I've seen him in the under twenty threes recently, and I guess it's good for the club that he's pushing and he's maybe. I suppose he's maybe pushing you for a place though, because you kind of play in a similar position. Yeah, well, I think it's always good. Well, young people coming through, but not just young people. I think any competition is always good. I think because if you know you're gonna play week in week out, you might relax a little bit, you might slack off a bit. But if you know there's someone behind you waiting, if if you don't play well, if you don't perform in training all week, then he's ready to take your sp- uh, place. And so you need to be ready. Ben, no Benikafobi, obviously this weekend. Can't play against Stoke City, but um, I guess you guys have got plans in place. Have you got either Fam or Semenya or somebody else? Have you been working on specifically that? Yeah, the manager obviously. I'm sure he already know what what team he'll he'll want to play on Saturday. But I think it doesn't really matter who comes in. Like I said, obviously Antoine might come in, Fam might come in. Um, I'm happy to play with either. Well, if I'm selected, I'm happy to to play with either. But like I said, that's that's. The competition that's what you need because for Benick it's unfortunate because he's he's played really well since he's come in but now it's someone else's chance to come in and, and well hopefully win the game for us and and show the manager that he should be playing just just finally for myself how do you assess um the start of the season for Bristol City and where you guys are at, at the moment not necessarily results wise in, in the table I think it's been a good start I think we've had a lot of change especially I think towards the end of the transfer window so for everyone to come in and, and gel as quickly as we have, I think it's been good. Where we are, even it's early, but where we are in the table is probably where we want to be right now. We are in a good position, and now the next, I think it's four weeks to the next international break. So it's it's about trying to get as many points as we can and, and keep that momentum going. Uh, Andy, just with Antoine, how you said about improving his finishing things? Like, how did you use that sort of more time after training, or just? Verbally or how do you no, just I think when we when we're in training and the way, um, obviously we're trying to help with his movement or where he should be, and when we're defending, his defending positioning and yeah, in the finishing, I think just it's finishing. I think you you can always work at it. You can just try and tell him what I think. It might might be wrong, but I'm just <laughs> trying to obviously see because I know he's young and he's he's willing to learn. So he he asts and we're trying to help him. During training, just to clarify. Yeah, when we're doing a finishing, when we're doing a finishing session, do we with just the forwards or whatever? We, yeah. I mean, what is it like? Because obviously, like Greg alluded to, obviously the twenty-eight in a funny way, you're sort of one of the older heads in, in a very young team. What's that like, to, sort of dynamic quite? Yeah, um, I think me as a person, I'm quite quiet normally, but like you say, I'm now one of the older people, so I'm trying to. Be more vocal in the change room and trying to maybe take on that leadership role a little bit more, which is yeah a little bit different for me. But I'm I'm trying to. Yeah. Is it a bit funny because obviously not so long ago you were sort of exploding onto the scene at Villa and things like that, and suddenly now you're you know you're in a sort of totally different. Yeah, no, it goes it goes so quick. I think I can remember making my debut nearly nine years ago, and like you say, it's not, I'm now 28. But yeah, no, it goes so quick in football. You just gotta enjoy it. I was asking about Hanoa. What's he like and sort of. No, just away from the pitch, he seems to have settled in so sort of seamlessly for such a young guy. Yeah, no, on the pitch, he's been brilliant for us since he's come in, obviously. And then off the pitch, I think he's obviously you expect that he's from a different country, he's still a little bit quiet, but his, his English is great. You can have a normal conversation with him, and yeah, I think he's in, he's really enjoying it so far. And, and we're certainly happy that he's here. You can say, have you and the lads sort of shown him around town? And- Bit of sightseeing or something. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't yet. But I think he's got. I think. I think he's got a bit of family here, so I'm sure he's he's done loads of that. What? Um. Obviously, like you alluded to, obviously 
quite a sort of hectic summer in, in some ways here at the club. What's it been like to sort of be a part of? Obviously, you've stuck around. What, what's it been like to sort of see that change firsthand? Um, well, yeah, it's, like I say, I think it all happened quite quickly in the probably all in the last week. But I think it's probably a credit to to the staff how quickly they've managed to get all the players gelling together, work, working towards that that goal and also to the players who've come in to, to take everything on board and and try and learn the way we wanna wanna play and the culture of, of Bristol City. So I think it's yeah, it's been good. Does anything happen as, as a group sort of once the window does shut and you know it's, it's you sort of guys together. Is any is anything to say about that? Do you sit down as a group and sort of when 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 it's you know, you know who you've got? Um not not really. I think obviously maybe sometimes if I when players are trying to leave or they want to leave, so you obviously know that he's trying to trying to leave. But then after the windows closed, yeah, that's what you've got. But you're not. I would you you wouldn't sit down and say yeah, have a conversation. This is it. But this is what we've got now until January, and you you have to obviously accept who we've got. And everyone's like I said, come in, settled in. It's been brilliant. And like I said, the last five games it looks like we've gelled pretty quickly and. We just—it's all about keeping that going, man. And what is the belief? Is it the belief that you can go one better than last year? Um, well, I think you always have to believe that. I think there's no point, no point playing if you're not think you can get promotion. And I think everyone wants to get promoted, but another twenty teams probably want to get promoted. So it's it's not easy. We know that, but yeah, our, our dream is to get promoted to the Premier League. How, how do you analyse the sort of makeup of the rest of the division? Not necessarily me personally, but some people have said that. There's no sort of outstanding team this year. What sort of players take on that? I think it's still tough. I think it's always been like that in the championship. I think anyone can be anyone. So I think if you want to get promoted, you need to perform consistently, and that's that's what we're trying to do to obviously keep that level. What we've done in the last five games to keep that as long as possible and and be up there at the end, hopefully. Just lastly, on Han Lowe, does, does he remind you of anybody? Obviously, you. you made a love here, Will Hughes obviously coming through at Derby, really young, sort of precocious talent, does he remind you of anybody at all? Um, I couldn't think of anyone to be honest at the top of my head. Um, Will, when I came to Derby, he was already playing, so he wasn't like coming through then, so yeah, couldn't couldn't really tell you anyone. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> on, the, on the subject to getting promoted, obviously, a heartbreak at the end of last season, to come so close to the playoffs and um, not quite get there, and then... Um, <laughs> The year before, also to an extent, um, what lessons do you think the team has learned from those experiences? Um, is it is it sort of increased your drive and hunger to to, to come back stronger this year? And, and how, how have you coped with that? Um, I think yeah, of course we're hungry. I think, but like I said earlier, I think everyone in this league that's that's the aim to get promoted and learn. I think it'll only show it'll show at the end of the season if we've if we've learned anything. But like. I've, well, I've had it at Derby as well. Three years, we, I lost in the playoffs twice. So, I think you just keep going, and you, you it's that dream of getting promoted. So that's that's all we're pushing for. It must be incredibly painful those days when you when you come so close and, and you don't quite get there. There must be must be um, a real, uh, like I said, like a learning curve and character building as well. As I suppose you have to then start the next season and dig in and go again. Yeah. Like, so does that make you stronger? Would you say? Yeah, probably. But I think it's. It probably sounds silly, but when you when you lose in the playoffs so when you finish and you don't make it, then you've got what, six or seven weeks off. So then by the time you come back, yeah. you've probably forgotten about it and you're ready to, to go again and, yeah. and ready to try again and, and see what happens the next season. Yeah. So I've been talking to, to fans outside the stadium this season. And I think there's optimism every season, but there is, there is a sense of optimism, um, at least amongst the fans again this year. So yeah, hopefully hopefully this can be this can be the year everyone's, everyone's fully behind the club. Yeah, I hope so. I think, but again, but, yeah. if you ask fans, <laughs> if you ask fans of another team before the season starts, yeah. they'll they'll be optimistic, and we are, of course, we are. Otherwise, there's no point. There's no point playing if we're not optimistic of getting promoted. But it's like it's not going to be easy. We know that it's going to be really hard. But it's our dream, and we'll see see what happens. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers.